a 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti might be launching very soon. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. So when the RTX 3080 and 3090 launched, right away I knew that Nvidia was saving room for a potential RTX 3080 Ti, considering the large gap in CUDA cores as well as memory between the two cards, and it looks like that might be the case as new leaks were posted online by Twitter leaker Copite7Kimi pointing to a possible 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti being made in response to AMD's very well positioned RX 6900 XT which looks to be roughly as fast as a 3090 for $500 less. So I'm going to go ahead and read his tweet that he posted here regarding the RTX 3080 Ti and give you my thoughts on the leak specs, the performance and the price as well as how it might stack up against AMD's RX 6900 XT and I just want to preface this by saying that you know earlier on he started by saying that there was several different models being worked on one of them was a um, basically full 3090 die with 12 gigabytes there was a 20 gigabyte version being worked on and they weren't fully sure if there was going to have you know 9,000 something shaders or the full 3090 die so it looks like he's finally figured that out as he had this to say in his most recent tweet Quote, finally the survivor is the RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition. And then below that he gives you the specs, which apparently it's going to be based on the GA102-250-KD-A1 GPU die. It will apparently have 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X, the same FP32 count as the RTX 3090, which by the way is 10,496 shaders. That is quite a bit, a huge increase over the RTX 3080. It will have the same memory speed in TGP as the RTX 30 3080, which is very impressive considering the fact that the 3080, you know, it has quite a bit less shaders. So to be able to pack in the full 3090 shaders and still only have a 320 watt TDP, I'm not entirely sure how they're doing that. Maybe it's just because the memory speed is running lower, or maybe these are just better bin dies. We'll just have to wait and see. And then finally, apparently it's going to have no NV link. And you know, overall, this is actually somewhat close to what I was expecting. Now, I was personally expecting uh, NVIDIA to come out with a 3080 Ti model that had 12 gigabytes of VRAM, not 20 gigabytes. So that's actually really surprising to see as, you know, earlier on, I can't remember who shared them, but there, there were some leaks going around suggesting that maybe, uh, I think it came from video cards, that the 20 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte models had been canceled. So to see that supposedly, at least according to copite 7 kimi which by the way, this is, you know, leaks and rumors can end up being false. But, you know, if it, this does turn out to be true, it looks like a 20 gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti might still be coming. And to have the full RTX 3090 die is very impressive. And, you know, I kind of actually was excited expecting that because if you go ahead and you take a look at the slides that AMD showed of their 6900 XT on the launch event, um, you'll see that the 6900 XT was matching if not beating the RTX 3090. So I think that kind of puts Nvidia in a situation where they pretty much have to give you the full RTX 3090 die because if they don't, they could be looking at a scenario where, you know, they might actually not beat the RTX or sorry, RX 6900 XT. And we got to remember those slides that they showed, I believe they were showing them with the SAM smart access memory as well as rage mode enabled so it had a little bit of a boost there um, but even if you disable those settings I think you're probably looking at a situation where maybe the 6900 XT is just a little bit slower than the RTX 3090 on average and so that doesn't really give Nvidia a whole lot of room to cut down the 3090 and I think they kind of are choosing the smartest uh, option here because you know if they give you essentially the full RTX 3090 die and all they do is cut down the memory from 24 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes and the memory bus from 380 4 bit to 320 bit, well, that's very unlikely to affect the performance that much because the RTX 3090 has an enormous amount of bandwidth. So just cutting down the bus and then cutting down the GDDR6X speeds from, I believe, 19.5 gigabits per second to 19 gigabits per second, yeah, it's probably going to result in like maybe a 2 to 3 percent drop in performance, which should allow NVIDIA, if AMD has their SAM and Rage Mode disabled, should allow NVIDIA to actually be able to beat the 6900 XT on average by like maybe 
you know, one to 5%, which is just enough for NVIDIA to say, hey, we win. And you got to remember, NVIDIA is a company that absolutely hates losing. They have to win. So, you know, if they do that and they drop in at around $1,000, well, then I think they're in a pretty decent position still. Now, of course, they're talking about a 320 watt GPU versus a 300 watt GPU. So they're going to lose a little bit in terms of efficiency, but we'll just have to wait and see what the actual power draw is from reviewers when these uh, cards come out to fully, you know, see which card is more efficient. But again, they're still going to be winning by just a little bit here. And, you know, they probably even have a little bit of room to charge more. Now, I don't think that they should charge more than $1,000 because at that point, it's going to make the GPU far less competitive. But if they wanted to, they could charge between $1,000 and $1,200. And I bet a lot of people would still buy it because you got to remember, NVIDIA, their marketing is just a lot better. There's a lot more people who are willing to buy NVIDIA over AMD. Um, there's some other features that AMD doesn't necessarily have an, uh, an answer for yet. Uh, People tend to say that the NVIDIA encoder is better. The drivers have been better in the recent history. And then on top of that, we know that NVIDIA, at least right now, is likely to have better ray tracing performance. And we don't know what AMD's DLSS competitor is going to look like. So I could see people spending, you know, maybe a little bit more money on an RTX 3080 Ti, especially if it has all those features, as well as four more gigabytes of VRAM as the 6900 XT only has 16 gigabytes, which I don't know why you would need more than 16 gigabytes, but hey, apparently some people do. So I think this is a really smart move from NVIDIA to do this. You know, I, I've been saying for a while here that there's definitely going to be an RTX 3080 Ti. It just makes a whole ton of sense when you consider the gap in cores and memory between the 3080 and 3090, as well as the price. I mean, you're talking yeah, one GPU at $700, one GPU at $1,500. That's absolutely ludicrous. So, you know, makes a whole lot of sense. I'm glad NVIDIA is doing this. It makes them a lot more competitive, but the only people who are going to be a little sad about this is RTX 3090 owners because I guarantee you most of those owners um, especially if you're into gaming and you bought a 3090 because it has the best gaming performance that's going to be a big oof considering there's going to be two cards out there the 6900 XT and the 3080 Ti that will be you know very very close in terms of performance to that card and on top of that even people who use this as like a workstation card because remember it's not a Titan it doesn't have the professional drivers it's not as good as that for workstation tasks but people who use it for light workstation tasks because it had the 24 gig gigabytes of VRAM, I guarantee you a lot of those people probably would have been fine with 20 gigabytes as well. So a big oof for 3090 owners. I bet they're kicking themselves right now, but you know what? It's better for everyone else. But that being said, I got to say, I don't recommend you buy basically any of the cards I've talked about right now. I mean, these are all cards that are $1,000 plus that offer such measly performance gains over the 6800 XT and RTX 3080. And I think they offer very, very poor value. And I think you're better off buying something like a 3070, 3070 Ti, or 6800 XT or even RTX 3080, even if you're an enthusiast. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these RTX 3080 Ti 20 gigabyte rumors? Do you think that it's actually going to launch with the full 3090 Dyn 20 gigabytes? Or do you think it's going to be cut down? I'd like to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here you won't be disappointed.